Hello there, I am the Bible of soccer, not soccer, and in this video we want to talk about Mexico and the press and about how beautiful this world looks like. So we're here uh, from Russia, uh, getting ready for the Confederation Cup 2017. We're here in front of Hermitage, beautiful museum. It's considered to be one of the top five uh, museums around the world. Uh, but personally, this is one, this is my favorite museum. Okay, so we're gonna talk here. Uh, I remind you that English is not my first language. English is not my second language. And I'm here with no teleprompter, no guidelines, no master edition, recording everything from my cell phone. And I speak like this, a little bit slow, so I don't lose my train of thought. Okay, so we're gonna talk some about Mexico. Mexico, they have a problem with the press. Okay, what is the problem? They have the same problems that England a team in Europe. There is that the press, always believe or make the people believe that they have better team that they actually have okay in mexico they have the same problem and uh, we want to make here an example of this so the first uh, current or the current problem in mexico that is not happening anymore because one of the goalkeeper they didn't call but they usually have a discussion about who should be the first goalkeeper for, for, for the national team. So they have Talavera, they have Ochoa, and they have Corona. Okay, I remind you that, uh, don't confuse because they have Corona the goalkeeper and they have Corona the striker. Okay, but we're gonna talk here about the goalkeeper. So basically, uh, the discussion is always made in a kind of a negative way. Okay, but if they want to make the discu this discussion in a positive way, they should say, is it okay for us, for the national team, to have three goalkeepers with the same style? Okay, it's because the question is not really who is the best or who should be the first goalkeeper of this team. I'm gonna disappear a little bit from the camera so I can talk better. But uh, basically, they have these three goalkeepers and they have the same style, so the question should be uh, made, made in a different way. So uh, the style of these three goalkeepers are that they have very good elong elongation, they have very good sense of location, they go out, okay, if they need to, okay, and they're very uh, secure of themselves, they trust themselves. What is the difference between these goalkeepers? Because they have the same style of playing. The difference is that Memo Choa, besides of uh, have received several goals, uh, not only in the national team, but also in his club. The difference between these three goalkeepers is that Memo Choa gives, sends the ball away inside of the field. Okay, Talavera, he gives more corners kicks than Memo Choa. And Corona, he gives even more corner kicks than Talavera. Okay, so we have pretty much the same goalkeeper in all aspects, but we have Memo Choa that don't give too much corners kicks, then we have Talavera that gives a little bit more, and we have Corona that gives more than Talavera. So for the coach, who is from Colombia, he prefers Memo Choa, he don't want to worry too much about corner kicks. So that's the reason why they play with Memo Choa, because every time in Mexico, the press and the fans ask themselves why they have to play with Memo Choa because they're confused about the uh, level of the other two goalkeepers. Okay, so they have Memo Choa there, and they have here Paul Aguilar. Paul Aguilar, he plays there. His main main characteristic attribute is that he's gonna go all the way to the front without the ball. He's not the typical win winger 
that he's gonna go with the ball or he's trying to make he's gonna try to make some passes now he's gonna go all the way to the front okay to try to score or to help in the last quarter of the field and he has uh, also very good cross passes when he gets there okay and he has very good long passes to start the attacking when the team recovers the ball okay now we have uh, here uh, Diego Reyes he's very good by coming from the back in the defensive attributes he's very good, good coming from the back of the player to take the ball he also have he has long passes okay now we have here Hector Moreno Hector Moreno is very good with the aerial game okay with his head and he always when he has the ball when the team recovers the ball he always gonna start short passes to go into the attacking but he's very good at this he has very good vision of the game and he always is gonna give one pass in advantage in order to left, leave behind some players from the other team okay now we have here Layun Nayu Layun is a winger that he has very good running okay when he take advantage of the spaces all the time and he also has a good entrance okay in the defenses in the defensive attribute he has very good entrance from the front okay usually from the front not from behind like Diego Reyes he has very good entrance from the front okay and one characteristic one attribute from this player is that he's very uh, he's a little bit uh, acrobatic in some so at some points but I don't know if I will give him uh, so much credit for this because I don't sure if he does this to protect himself from the ball or if he does it uh, to try to block any possible scoring situation okay we have here in this position as a defensive midfielder usually plays uh, Rafa Marquez okay this player always gonna go there without the ball okay and here usually plays Rafa Marquez but Rafa Marquez I believe he has been injured uh, for this tournament so he has he is not gonna play and they have a Jesus Molina who has very good aerial game as well as Hector Moreno sorry Hector Moreno Hector Moreno is this one okay not this one okay so now you have two players that are very good in the aerial game okay they're very good with their head and Hector Moreno also has a little bit of a scoring attributes is his kind of the same style of playing as Rafa Marquez but Rafa Marquez is a lot superior but the reason why why he is going to be the substitution is because taking his position is because it's basically because of his aerial game then we have here uh, uh, another thing about this player Jesus Molina is that he plays better in the club than in the national team we see this problem over and over or in different ways uh, depending on the players and in the opposite situation we have Andres Guardado Andres Guardado basically is just the opposite he plays better for the national team than he does for the club usually we've been waiting for Guardado for so many years to explode and to become the player everybody thinks he could be but he has his best uh, presentations when he plays for, for, for the national team and when he plays for his club he's not as good okay he's like a one level down when he plays for the club and he has uh, he's in charge of the corner kicks okay for the left uh, with the left foot he's in charge of the free kicks um, 
<coughs> he has very good long passes, long passing. But the most important attribute of this player is not really uh, something that you can see. Because his main attribute is that he's always very focused. He's always very concentrated in the match. Okay, and I forgot something about Lyon, that this is the reason I think why he plays, besides being a low point in this team, and is that he can play with his two feet, left and right. Okay, he can play with both feet, he's very good technically. So coming back to Guardado, he's also in charge of kicking the penalty kicks, even though uh, some other players has more trajectory in the team, he's still in charge of this because, as I say, as I mentioned, his main attribute is his, his, his uh, sorry, for my pronunciation, he's very focused on the match all the time. Then we have Hector Herrera. Hector Herrera is basically an organizer, okay? He's gonna go with assistance, passes, and he has a little bit of a scoring attributes. But basically his function in this team is organizing, like the number 10. Then we have uh, here Corona, Corona the striker, not Corona the goalkeeper, but there is not going to be confusion for this tournament because Corona is going to be uh, in Mexico. He's not traveling with the team for this tournament. They selected another third goalkeeper. But here we have Corona. Corona has very good dribbling. Okay, he's very talented. He can pass and avoid okay players from the opposite team and he's very quick he's very fast he runs a lot okay and he's very fast sometimes you're gonna see that he's coming with the ball okay and their team is still coming behind him because he's very fast this is why it took a lot of time for the coach to put him on the starters because he needed time and the team needed the time to adapt to the system or adapt to this player a little bit because he's very very fast but he's very talented and he also has very good scoring okay this player can change a match in one second and it at any time then we have uh, Chicharito Hernandez everybody knows this player okay he's very good with his head very good aerial Again, he has very good sense of location. This is very important. But uh, his main attribute and the reason why he's been so far in football is because his particular way of kicking the ball, where he kicks the balls, he kicks the ball, and it's really hard to say where the ball is gonna go because the effect of in the way he kicks the ball and also you don't know if it's gonna be too high or too low because of this same effect that's why some people say okay Chicharito Hernandez he doesn't have anything to have reached so far well this is the reason because beside of what I say before that yeah he's very good in this he's very good on that but so many players have this the difference what makes him different is that this way of uh, kicking the ball that you don't know exactly where the ball is gonna go and we have here uh, Lozano Keith Lozano they call it the Chucky he has very good diagonal I would say that Corona plays a little bit more like that because he's very fast and Lozano a little bit more like this and because uh, Herrera is an organizer I would put him here but he has very good diagonal he can avoid some uh, players from the opposite team and he creates spaces okay he creates his own spaces to give a pass or to simply try to score okay now sometimes in this team they also play uh, Carlos Vela or Giovanni Dos Santos okay as strikers but pretty much this is this the uh, started 11 that they use a uh, regular so let's talk a little bit about how this team plays okay Mexico they play a little bit like going like they try they try to ignore these areas 
but they really don't do it. Okay, they always want to try to go in the direction to score. Okay, when they come. But this is like a little bit fake or deceive. It's a little bit deceiving because if they start doing this and you get too used to it, they also sometimes go all the way to the sides. Okay? But usually they're gonna go like this in this direction. They're gonna try to create in this direction. But also they have a, this tactic that they're gonna do cross passes to Chicharito Hernandez. Okay, where they're gonna look they're gonna try to do the, the cross passes in the way that is gonna be very high. In the way that if in the sense that if Chicharito Hernandez cannot hit the ball with his head, the ball is gonna go over everybody and another player from the team is gonna try to catch the ball here. This is typical from Mexico. They're gonna do this, okay? They actually uh, has been trying this several times and it looks a little bit ridiculous and everybody think uh, it's a mistake, but no, this is the, the way they do it. Uh, so just in case, if he can uh, hit the ball with his head, nobody else can, and they still have the ball. And they also like to do the same, but when they start in here, okay? try to change the game to decide or decide they don't do this in the middle too much okay and the low uh, size of this team the low points is this player as I mentioned but they also have some dead points here that the other teams can exploit okay try to start the organizing from this point the difficult thing is you usually try to start the organizing from this point. So here is where they have a little bit of low points, but it's difficult to reach there. But once you're there, uh, this is where they suffer a lot, this thing. Okay, so uh, if you like this video, you can give it a like, you can share it, uh, you can give me a thumbs up, and you can subscribe, but remember that this is mainly an Spanish-speaking uh, YouTube channel. Or if you want to learn some Spanish with me, uh, go ahead. So it says goodbye to you, the Bible of Soccer. Thank you very much.